Margaret, what on earth are you playing at? Hmm, luckily we have just the man to sort you out. Right, Margaret, I hear you've been a naughty girl and forgotten how to examine people's nerves. Did you even wash your hands? Students. Right, well let's start again then. After introducing yourself and gaining consent, state that ideally you would like to expose the patient down to their underwear. Then recount to yourself, is the physician really so cool? First, look at the patient, Margaret. Are there any obvious scars, rashes, atrophy, fasciculations or tremors? Also, look for clues from the examiners. A lonely tendon hammer is a sure sign you'll soon be expected to test reflexes. Measuring the quadriceps can help you assess the muscle wasting. To test for tone, first ask the patient if they're in any pain. Then get them to relax their legs. Dough roll each limb in turn. You can also flick up the patient's knees and attempt to elicit clonus by rapidly dorsiflexing a pain-free angle of the patient. More than three beats is a sign of a UMNL. Test power by asking the patient to perform these movements against resistance. So can you bring a bit to your bottom for me? Push me away and pull me towards you. Now bring your feet up and now push me away. Bring your toes up and down. And bring your feet out. Power is graded using the MRC grading system. Grade 0 is no movement, whereas grade 5 is full power against resistance. There are only three reflexes a medical student need concern themselves with in the lower limb, so even Margaret can remember them. Well, let's recap then. First, grasp the tendon hammer thus. Good. Now, ask the patient to relax, and then, using movement only at the wrist, allow the weight of the tendon hammer to fall onto the relevant tendon. The reflexes in the lower limb are knee, L3, L4, ankle, S1, and plantar. Upgrade plantars are a sign of an ipsilateral upper motor neuron lesion. If no reflex is observed, then ask the patient to clench the teeth or perform Gendrasic's manoeuvre while you strike the tendon. This is reinforcing the reflex. Using a piece of cotton wool, Test on the chest as a point of reference and ask the patient if it feels the same on each dermatome. Glove and stocking sensory loss is characteristic of peripheral neuropathies. Repeat this using a neuro tip, remembering of course to dispose of it in a sharp spin afterwards. <coughs> the dermatomes of the lower limb are L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, S1, and S2. Pain, temperature, and simple touch are all carried in the spinothalamic tract of the spinal cord, which ascends contralaterally. Use a 128 Hz tuning fork to test vibration sense in the lower limb. If the patient senses the vibration in the great toe, this is most likely normal, and you may state that you will move on. Do you have any pain in your feet? No. No? If this is up and this is down, then can you close your eyes for me and tell me whether it's up or down? Down. To test proprioception, show the patient your actions as you move their distal interphalangeal joint up and down. Then. Ask the patient to close their eyes and get them to tell you which way you are moving their distal phalanx. Down. Up. 
Vibration, proprioception and fine touch are all part of the dorsal column pathway of the spinal cord, which ascends ipsilaterally. To test coordination, ask the patient to point at their knee with their opposite heel, then stroke down towards their ankle and repeat this circuit as quickly as they can. Compare both sides as usual. Ow! Ow! We now ask the patient if they can stand and walk a few paces so we can assess their gait. We must also observe if they can walk heel to toe. Some abnormal gaits include high stepping, scissoring, festinant, ataxic, apraxic and Trendelenburg. You can also perform Romberg's test. In a lesion of proprioception, the patient becomes unsteady. This is a positive Romberg's test. On completion, thank the patient and say you perform a neurological examination of the upper limb and a full peripheral vascular examination as well. OK, stop. Full marks for effort, Margaret, but Oscars are also about sounding slick, like this. Mr. Skellum is comfortable at rest with no visual signs of neurological pathology in the lower limb. Tone and reflexes are normal and power in all muscle groups is grade five bilaterally. Sensation in all testing modalities is normal, as is coordination. Combined with his normal gait, this is all suggestive of a patient with no neurological pathology of the lower limb. Well, Margaret, I hope you've learned something today. If you have, bravo, well done. If you haven't, well, it's your fault for not listening hard enough, isn't it? I'll take no responsibility for your future mistakes. Good luck on the awards. <laughs>